This webinar is one in a series of short interviews with doctors who attended the 2023 American Society of Nephrology annual meeting. This is a three-day convention where nephrologists from around the world come together. Today we have with us Dr. Devura Geetha. Dr. Geetha is the Associate Director at Johns Hopkins Vasculitis Center and Professor of Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Geetha. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so I would uh, not like to, first of all, disclose my conflicts of interest. So I have been a consultant to Amgen and Chemocentrics, which are relevant to what I'm going to talk today. In addition, I have been a consultant to GSK, Kutsuka, Kaladitas. Thank well, you again for the invitation. Yeah. Yes, well, thank you for those disclosures. And did you see any greater interest in nephrologists with rare diseases and vasculitis specifically? I mean, I know they talk about a lot of things at the ASN, but I just wondered about yeah. us. I think a lot of nephrologists want to know about vasculitis because when it comes, it's a very rapidly progressive disease. The good news is if you give the medicine on time, you can reverse most of it. So everybody is eager to learn about new treatments, you know, how to approach. And a lot of times we do have to personalize the treatment based on the patient's age, other comorbidities, you know, the level of kidney dysfunction, you know, anchor type, and all of those things have to kind of come into consideration. So, you know, and more than 80 or 90% of the patients have kidney involvement. So nephrologists have to know and there's a lot of interest in the nephrologists yeah i mean so so that was I mean, so those two studies were part of the advocate which were i think key studies just to show that in both patients with kidney involvement and in older individuals the avocapen um, had less glucocorticoid dosing less toxicity while maintaining the efficacy right so now that the trial is out there's a lot of people looking at real world experience how are people actually using it in real practice and in fact i led one of the studies we collected data from about 12 centers from the us uh, between october of 2021 and may of 2023 so it's almost now two years after fd approval of for tavernius uh, we collected data on about 92 patients uh, all of them had at least like one month follow-up but several had like 52 week follow-up what is different is uh, advocate trial excluded patients with GFR, which is the kidney function number, right? The, um, the percentage of kidney function less than 15. And in this real world you know, experience, we have about 31 patients, I'm sorry, 21 patients who had GFR less than 15, 21 patients of the 92. So we have data on those to show, you know, how effective it is. And then, in the advocate trial, I mentioned one arm received the tavernias or avocapan, the other arm received prednisone, but everybody got either rituximab or cyclophosphamide. Uh, in the real world, we have 44% of the patients or so who got a combination of rituximab or cyclophosphamide, which, you know, which is something that is currently being commonly used, especially when they have severe kidney dysfunction, you know, like when they're requiring dialysis, for example, then you hit that with everything, right? So the real world data actually has, you know, these two patients included in that. And then obviously we don't have any data on Plex and Tavernius and Avocapan. So in the real world data, about 13 patients received Plex as well. So what we showed was um, the, we defined remission not by BVAS, which is what, which is an activity score that is used in clinical trials. We defined it by what the physician thinks when the vasculitis is quiet, clinical remission. So clinical remission at week 26 was seen in the real world experience in 90% of the patients and at week 52 in 84%, so actually higher than what you saw in advocate trial. And there could be many reasons. It, it could be because they were on a combination of rituximab and cyclophosphamide. They also got steroids, you know, much more than you know, what the advocate trial uh, avocapan arm got, but significantly less compared to the prednisone arm. And the other important thing about the real world experience is um, even though in the advocate trial, the avocapan arm patients completely came off prednisone, in the real world experience, 30% of the patients remained on prednisone. You know, th that's how we practice, right? So I think people ought to know it's not like everybody stops it. So 30% of the patients are still on uh, prednisone. Okay, well, that, yeah. that's great news. I know that um, most 
patients, most vascularized patients with kidney involvement um, have great concerns over the, you know, the need for steroids to help get our kidney function under control right away. We understand that, but this introduction of a vacopan, like we all feel like it may change so many things for us. And it sounds like that's what you're saying. Do you think that, um, the nephrologists that were there, they will start to explore these options with reducing steroids for patients. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, like we all are hoping that that is on the bubble, but the last time I talked to my nephrologist about it, he was like, well, I'm not sure that's the right direction at this time. So I'm, I'm wondering, did these studies, what you saw recently, make it feel like it's gonna be more prevalent? Yeah, I mean, I think so, because I think everybody is very, I mean, patients dislike prednisone, doctors dislike, dislike prednisone, everybody wants to, you know, get the patients off the prednisone as much as possible, or at least have them on a, the tiniest of a minor, very minimal dose possible. Like, there is a lot of interest. And now, will an average community nephrologist start using it? I'm not really sure, because I think vasculitis patients are complicated, you know, I think they... Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they should come to, you know, centers of excellence, you know, either, you know, whether they're glomerular disease centers of excellence or vasculitis centers, you know, I think they're, they're probably better managed there, you know, just because it's easier to personalize treatment when you are at an expert center. Not everybody requires, you know, like uh, rituximab, for example, every six months for life, right? There are people who you can stop. So treatments have to be personalized. Now, whether, you know, avocapan is going to be adopted by an average community ne nephrologist, I think it's going to take time. They are still learning about it, but there is a lot of interest. Well, it, it, it certainly sounds very hopeful to all of us. So we appreciate that you shared that with us today. Do you, just one final thought, I was just wondering, do you have, did you see any studies tackling the issues with COVID and vasculitis? I, I just didn't know if there's anything that you saw that you would share today. Yeah, so actually, it also came out of, you know, one of the studies that we did. So we collaborated with the Mass General. And between uh, Hopkins and Mass General, we had about eight patients who had anchor vasculitis on our campaign and who also had experienced COVID-19 infection. And of the eight patients, seven of them had mild infection and they recovered without any sequelae, uh, then did not, not require any hospitalization or anything like that. One patient actually did have severe uh, COVID, but I think that patient was a little complicated because he had underlying interstitial lung disease, which was already really in a bad situation. So I think his interstitial lung disease got worse. He ended up uh, you know, passing away, but most of the other patients had mild infections, did not require hospitalization. Well, we all hope we're going in that direction and that the world understands COVID better and that it's dissipating and, and that we, we have vaccines and everything else. But thank you so much for all that. Um, I did want to mention that the vas the Vasculitis Foundation is doing these short um, webinars right now because there were so many great takeaways at the a uh, ASN. Dr. Geetha, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We, we appreciate your perspective of what you learned at the ASN. Thank you so much, Kathy, for having me. It was wonderful talking to you and sharing my thoughts. Yeah.